Talk Radio. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk Radio. Good evening, dear listener. The Late Night Alternative, Monday to Friday. Ian Lee, who are you? Catherine Boyle. Tell us about our next guest, please, Catherine Boyle. Well... Camilla Constance is someone we read about in the online papers the other day when we were going through um, some yeah. of the more sexy stories, let's be honest. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was necessarily a sexy story. This was, is a very was, sexy story. It was sexual. I mean, the the ma- this is from the Mail Online. Mother who spiced up her 16-year marriage by taking two lovers and mm. having a string of flings with both men and women is now a sex coach who counsels couples while they are in bed. Now, the, That's the, what caught your the, eye, the let's be honest. The thing that caught my eyes of my head, of my face, was the thing about sitting in while people are um, having sex and, and perhaps critiquing them. Giving them some pointers. I don't know if, they, if she holds up scorecards at the end of that, but we'll find out. We've got Camilla Constance on the line now. Good evening, Camilla. Good evening. No, I don't hold up Good. scorecards. It's, it's an idea. I don't know if you, if you blow a whistle if they, they go in the wrong hole. I don't no, know. No, no. <laughs> That's not how it works. Tell us how it works. We, I found it fascinating. Go on. What, what, so what? We'll, we'll do the background in a bit. But it, one of these sessions, how, how does it work? Well, so my my whole approach to sex to sexuality is it's all pleasure based, and it's all about is it kind, is it beautiful, are both people having a really deeply wonderful, pleasurable, gorgeous, delicious time? Uh, very often, when couples come to me, one or other of them isn't having a gorgeous, delicious sensual sexy time for all sorts of different reasons so really what they're doing is i'm creating the space where they can come into the space and i can identify because very often within a couple because there's all this um i'm being careful with my language thank you there's a lot of conditioning that is not helpful when you say conditioning do you you mean stuff that they've learned as kids and 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 and, and older about what sex and what relationships are meant to be so to begin with we as parents don't talk to our kids about sex at all in this country yeah we wait until they're teenagers, until the right time, and then that right time, they're too embarrassed to talk to us about anything, let alone sex. Yeah. So, parents don't have the, the dialogue. The schools are no longer having really having the dialogue. So, and then and then we've, there's a background of conditioning from the church and from society about how girls should behave and how boys should behave and what's expected. But it's all kind of subtle. It's all these subtle, discreet messages that no one actually kind of has the conversation. And then to top it all. Where do young people go to learn about sex? They go and learn about it from porn. Well, this is the thing now. I've got two boys who are seven and nine, and Kath's got girls of similar ages. I'm so worried about them learning about it from, you know, I watched yeah. porn when I was 14, 15, but there was one tape that went around the school. Um, right. You know, so now, now they're going to have it. It's all full, hardcore, yeah. you know, stuff we couldn't see oh, oh, in their pockets. It's in their pockets. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's not a helpful message, and it's not particularly, it's not from. It's not kind sex, it's not loving sex, no. and, I, and when I say loving sex, I don't mean sex has to be in the context of a committed loving relationship, because as you know, that's not my background. Well, it was, but then it was also, I think a one-night stand can be deeply loving, it can be a beautiful, intimate connection between two people, and sex can, and so a lot of what I, 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 I work with, a tantric philosophy, it's very much about connecting the heart energy with the sexual energy, and that's what I bring to couples in the bedroom. So when I encounter, when people come to me and they say, actually, we're finding it really difficult to have this conversation together, we find it difficult to be together, we find it embarrassing, we don't know how, we just don't know where, it's just really awkward. But then if they're finding it difficult, I have been in sexual relationships where neither of us have been very good at communicating. Yeah. And I have been in, I would say, one sexual relationship where actually there has been an honesty and an openness mm. and a real... Th- th- there's been no shame. That's the thing. There's been no shame around it, and we've been able to say, "I wouldn't mind having a go at this. Would you fancy that? Would you?" But if if a couple are having trouble being intimate with their partner, how on earth do they then get the confidence or the courage or whatever it is to go? Well, I know. Let's let's go and see Camilla, and let's get Camilla to sit in with us, and she can. Because because so, the initial so reaction is it's in. the sitting in is very much at the end of the process. Okay. So, so really, by the time it gets to the point where they might want to come and actually work with me in person, we've developed a relationship right. through through um, Skype or Zoom. We've been working online for a while, or we've been having sessions in person, but not in the bedroom space. Yeah. And then it might just evolve, and they just kind of get... I, um, the question that comes from them, 
So it's never something I suggest. I don't ever suggest them, hey, do you know what? I think we should we'll be really good for you if I come and join you. Right. Kind of, that never comes from me. It's, it's kind of, it'll come out of, could you help with that? Or could you show us that? It's very often, could you show us that? Um, so I'll be trying to describe how to stroke or how to touch, and I'll be describing oh. how our bodies are fairly similar um, and different, but it's similarities that actually is where... Is, is, it, if you know your own body really well and you know your own pleasure really well, A, you can ask much more easily your partner what to give you, but also you have an indication of what he or she might like because you know your own body. And if it pleases you on your body, because our bodies aren't actually that dissimilar, you will know how to please somebody else. And that is so much easier to show them in real life. Why are we so embarrassed about sex? I, I say, I'm 46, and, I, for, you know, for, for my, up until the last couple of years, last year, I've been too embarrassed ashamed i mean there are things that happened to me that were young when i was younger that, that kind of conditioned me a little bit of abuse oh. seeing my dad not being a great he didn't abuse me but seeing my dad not being great around women and the way he treated them oh. and i've learned all of this stuff about being ashamed and too afraid to say to the person i'm supposedly in love with oh. could you put your finger there and do you mind yeah. if i lick that yeah and we're ashamed it's a really tough thing to say isn't it but as you say it's the conditioning it's yeah. the way you're raised it's what's modeled to you so one of the really what i hope and i don't know this yet but what i hope is that because of the journey i've had whilst my kids were quite young and as they're growing up and i've been very open in ways that some people might find uncomfortable but for example i was not at all uncomfortable about that mail article being published right. earlier this week because my kids knew it all your kids are grown up now aren't they they're 15 down to 11. Oh, okay, sorry, they're I thought they were older. Grown up. Okay, no, 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 no. okay. And, um, right. But there was no discomfort to me in, in the thought that they might see it, and as it is, they, they haven't looked for it, and they don't want to read it because they're a little bit embarrassed by my job. Um, but that's fine. But the point is that they couldn't, they, if, they, if they did go to look for it and find it, there would be nothing in there that they would learn that would upset them because they know it all already. You're brilliant. I, I um... But let's, have, let's have this conversation. I came out as bi a couple of weeks ago, Camilla, after doing... Oh! oh look at that! I got a celebratory cheer! There you go. Oh, that's such a celebration! Thank, thank you. And I, I said it on air, and it's, it's, I've been doing a lot of therapy because of a divorce and because of oh. a, a horrible... Loads of stuff going on. And we kind that of worked out... That is such a healing thing for you to say and for the, all your listeners to hear. I'm sorry. The, no, beautiful. thank you, Camilla. It, and, and, and I said it on air a couple of weeks ago, and, it, it, you know, it got into the papers and all that stuff. And I did, most people were like you, were brilliant. Um, and a, a couple of people said... You shouldn't be talking about that because my boys are seven and nine. Your boys are going to find that. They're going to get teased at school. And, and I found it really confusing because everything I do in terms of what I reveal on the show, my kids are, are always... Cons I consider my kids and how they're going to react. Yeah. And I feel that I am... Sh by doing this at some point, we might have a, you know, an awkward conversation at some point, but, but they're going to realise that you don't have to live a lie, mm. that you can be open and honest and that there's no shame in this stuff. And I just was told by a couple of people you shouldn't have done that you, you're going to embarrass your kids and it's they're going to hate you uh for that and you know whose kids are going to be happier mm. more well-adjusted adults don't you i think so i think so and i notice i'm not saying definitely because i'm still wavering a little <laughs> bit thinking maybe it was totally the wrong thing maybe it was a selfish thing to come out and say something like that i don't know i don't How know it gives them permission this is my my very strong belief about my children it gives them permission so I was having conversations about me being polyamorous when my youngest was five. Right. And his well. response was, I have more than one friend in the playground, why shouldn't you? I'm like, wow, yeah, this is quite a good playground. Yeah, kids get it. <laughs> you know? And to them it was like really obvious. To them it's really obvious that you enjoy playing with more than one person. There was absolutely no judgment. But that was because they were... My honesty and my openness and my sharing with them came before their embarrassing, their yeah. embarrassed years. If I shared that story now with them, I think they'd all squeal with pain. <laughs> yeah, of course because, they would. But then that's also, that's also part of our jobs as parents is to we go embarrass them a little bit from time to time. Yeah, of course. Um, but I really, truly believe that they have grown up. So first of all, my daughter has grown up knowing that sexual pleasure is a female, a female entitlement and right. Mm. And that if you are not enjoying something sexually, then you just say no to it. That there is no consent without pleasure. 
That's a really important lesson, isn't it, Camilla? I'm, I've, I, I, as a mother of daughters, and you know, I, I grew up in a household where it, I was one of two daughters, and my mum was always really open. My dad didn't really want to know about any of that stuff, and he left it to my mum. But thank God she, we could ask her anything, and often she would give us yeah. more information than we asked for. But I've noticed amongst women my age and older, and maybe a little bit younger too, that there is a real disconnect between what's above the waist and what's down. It's, it's still a little bit of embarrassment there, you know. There are loads of products that are designed to make us feel like we're not clean enough, all that sort of oh stuff. Oh my god! Yeah. And all that is so hard to overcome, but you've got to, haven't you? Mm. Yeah, totally. And then it only today I read in the paper that um, choking has become a standard thing mm. in in couple sex. Hang on, sorry, and what? Choking. Choking. It was what, actually strangling them. Today. What? But, um, what? What's it called? Asphyxiation? Erotic asphyxiation? Oh, okay, yeah. It used to be a very niche thing. And that's become a standard? It's become a standard, and women are consenting to it, and I say this in inverted commas, because they think it's it's standard sex, and this is what they need to this do. This has come from plan. porn, has it, I'm guessing? Yes. Right, gosh. It crossed over from niche into mainstream. Ay, ay, ay. Because of porn. And, and that disconnect... Um, that women feel that, that they've disconnected their pleasure from, from sex. They just don't understand mm -hmm. that, that their pleasure is the most... That's, like, no one should do anything... So, no one should do anything in life will stop, in my opinion, unless they're getting pleasure from it. And I accept there are certain jobs we have to do and earn money, blah, blah, blah. There are certain... Like, I really hate cooking and shopping and doing the washing up and all that, but I accept it's part of my role and I just have to do it. But... With sex, why would anybody do anything sexually that doesn't give them pleasure? Mm. It makes no sense to me. But these women are consenting to, to this act because they feel they have to, to be desirable or cool or Blimey. something. Yeah. And I'm just like, what? It's because those women in porn are doing it, so it must be all right. Maybe it's just me being a bit funny about it. I don't exactly. want to I don't be unsexy. Normal. Yeah, that whole thing. But a lot of porn, I mean, I think that there are, there are moves towards making pornography that is less about the man yeah. dominating or the yeah. matter or, or a, a lot of it's quite brutal and, and when the men get involved I find it quite off-putting but but there is a oh. lot yeah sometimes I think there that that's go. the case you know and you think yeah. this has not been made with women in mind this has been made for men to no. feel power I don't even see the sexiness in it no. um but, th but th there are moves now towards making more kind of that awesome, awesome feminist feminine. kind of porn yeah yeah really really awesome women out there but we're yeah. still a little way back aren't we the yeah. majority of it is. When did um, this is? We talk about this a, a lot more than it's probably healthy, Camilla. <laughs> when did the stepdaughter, oh god, stepdad, stepmom? When did that become a thing? Oh, In, Christ, incest for cowards. It's a really, you know, I listen. I look at porn, and it's always the thing that comes up. This is a stepmom sedu seduces her stepson. What? I don't it's the watch most. That. Isn't it like the most popular thing at the moment? It's huge. No. If this is where oh we God, are. I was so naive. Oh, you didn't know that. We educated you. God, we're for educating Camilla. Where does that, what does that say? No, it is. It is a big thing. But also, and I get, I get totally what you're saying about how women and young girls are affected by porn and the subservience. But also, it does affect men. Yes, men think, yes. well, my dick isn't big enough. I'm not lasting long enough. That guy's, you know, oh, doing it for an hour, and I can last thirty seconds. Also, am I supposed to treat her like that? Am I supposed to? Am I supposed, to, am like I supposed to strangle her? Am I supposed yes. to slap her? What, what is this? For me, the huge sadness is um, the, the interaction between the male and the female has yeah. just been destroyed by the world of pornography because actually the, the, what men really love in sex is giving, giving, yes, and receiving, but really giving pleasure. It, it's like this, this profound shift happens in a man when, when he pleases a woman and she kind of awakens mm -hmm. and becomes his goddess. I mean, it just, it's life-changing for a man. And I don't, I don't really understand why that is, but it's just, it's just a constant theme I hear from my clients. What I really want to do is please her. And of course, yeah. that's then kind of been twisted into women needing to fake mm -hmm. in order to prove that the man has pleased her rather than actually just oh. being genuinely grounded in her pleasure and feeding back to him. By the yeah. way, what a great phrase. And when she becomes his goddess. Wow. Wow, oh, that's a totally great that phrase. I love that. But it is kind of a revelation when you realise you're both on the same side and one person isn't waiting for you to perform, you know? Yes, and there, there doesn't need to be any performance. There just needs to be connection and there needs to be this, this curiosity, this playfulness, this connection, this just pleasure, just, just exploring pleasure. Um, but what porn has done is it's, 
it's warped how men see themselves yeah. as sexual partners and they and and there's this perception that really hurts them and i see so many really wounded men because they think they're odd and they mm. come to me and they say i just want to stroke her and kiss her and make love to her but i feel i ought to be doing something else and all my friends will laugh at me if they find out what i'm doing well he doesn't know that all his friends have the same problem mm. and the same worry because they all think they're meant to be doing what they see in porn so they think there's something broken in them because they want to be intimate and kind and caring now how warped and messed up is that that you've got people who think that they are broken because they want to be kind yeah what right. a shame and then and then the next step on is that the, the neurotransmitters that are, that are stimulated by porn actually really mess with a man, man's sexuality so increasingly we're seeing men presenting with erectile dysfunction because oh, that's a huge problem isn't it at the moment because of huge porn huge problem yes because because essentially the, the dopamine that rewards novelty that is fed very rapidly through porn doesn't reward you with a real life woman because funnily enough she just isn't well, quite here's another thing that you may or may not know this is a problem with porn stars is that in the old days you'd have a fluffer that would would help you get erect and all that but now that isn't working so if you're quite often male porn stars who are filming you know quite an intense kinky in the vertical commas scene that's not working for them a fluffer isn't working so they then have to go online and look at even harder oh my God. porn so they can get it up for the scene that they're doing it, it's incredible you need to listen to i think i heard that from the john ronson yeah, podcast it's so good what was it called um there was one called the butterfly effect. the butterfly effect you should listen to that camilla mm. it's really really we got, uh, catherine will send you the link after an Thank email you. it's, it's really good he investigates kind of the porn industry oh. and uh, i think you might find it interesting i think you might find it yeah, really no, interesting it's, word. it's such a good and series sad. yeah really sad because um you would think that with all this we would becoming more enlightened but it sounds like actually um our horizon are becoming narrower yeah and what okay so so we're talking about oh, and I, i'm finally in a place where i can be open with with a, uh, my partner in the bedroom and say how about this do you fancy that and I'm, I'm happy to listen to suggestions but then if you're open it can it it can be difficult if someone says something that you're not that keen on what you know she says something to me or i say something to her what then are the rules are, are the rules if if if, if you think you're not that keen but you want to please them it can be hard to say no can't it yes but what i'd throw back at you is, is are you genuinely pleasing someone right yeah if you do something that doesn't give you pleasure it, it's faking again isn't it yeah and if the shoe so, is on the other foot would yeah. you want to feel that but someone then, was going through the motions for you is exactly it, is it some but is it what i'm trying to get at and this is i don't have a specific example that i'm thinking of and i'm not you're not trying is, is it worth trying something that you're not there may be things you're completely uh -huh. revolved by uh -huh. but maybe you go i don't know is it worth trying it because you might love it so a really good example of this is like is feet Okay, is what, so is what sorry? Men, there are lots feet. of men with feet. There are lots of men out there with foot fetishes. For right. one reason or another, men fetishize feet quite often. Uh -huh. And they are embarrassed to mention this wow. to their partner because they're worried that he'll be, they'll be humiliated, they'll be shamed, that something negative will come back. Yeah. So what I think the first rule is that you create a safe space within your relationship where you can bring up anything and then the response is always, it's always a kind response. So okay. it can be a kind rejection. It can be, actually, I'm not very comfortable with you sucking my toes. But I don't mind. But maybe I'd be happy with you giving me a foot massage. Okay, to okay. To start with. Yeah. So you, but but the, rule, the, the rule, as I see it, would be that the, the understanding is that you have a safe container in which you can raise anything. And you will be listened to with respect and kindness. And then that person will respond to you with respect and kindness. And then, and I don't really want to use the word negotiate, but you have a, an, a kind conversation where both people can raise what they want and their concerns. So um, we do this in the coaching modality I use. We do this in quite a formal way where you would um, talk about your fears and your desires on a regular basis as part of learning how to communicate. So my fears in this situation are, my desires in this situation are, and always what I love about you as well. So love, fears, and desires, and that's a really good container. A safe, it's a way of formalising the safe container and talking really openly. Mm. Do you um, 
to, to, when you're going back to kind of your job and stuff, and we're going to yeah. we'll do, we'll plug all the website and all of that in a minute. It's really interesting talking to you, Camilla. Thank you. We'll have to get you in the studio one night if you're, if you're <laughs> ever nearby. Um, so when you're when you're in a, a session with a couple and they're, um, uh, I was going to say having it away. What a terrible, what a terrible when they're making love. When um, he's um, uncovering her goddess. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's it. Thank so you. Nice. She's better at this than me. Um, did, that's I mean, a vile rumor. How does it work? Do, I mean, are you are, are you naked? Are you sat there with a clip? Clipboard? Are you? Definitely no clipboard. No, no clip. I said clip. By the way, <laughs> your, your, how how does it work? Are you are you are you hands on? Are you going? You might want to try it round that way. What what is the deal? It totally depends on the couple, and it totally depends on what they've asked for and what they're what what they're comfortable with. So um, I'm thinking back. I don't think I've ever been fully naked with a couple I'm coaching. Right. Um, but, I like the way you have to think about that. Oh, I, but, I, I, so for example, if I'm trying to show him how to massage her breast, yeah. and it would help to you move my breast, I'm not going to do it wearing a bra because my breasts don't move when, they're we when I'm wearing a bra. So oh, I, mean. I have no issue with nudity. I'm very comfortable with nudity. And um, if, the, if, if, I'm, if, if they're getting into a place where, they're, where they are nude in front of me and it is more comfortable for me to be nude with them, because that's the, the atmosphere and the energy in the room, then I will do that. If there's a sense that that's not right, then I then I won't. It really, I, I know it sounds like I'm trying. It sounds like I'm being a politician and I'm avoiding the question, but I'm genuinely not. Yeah. I really cater my sessions to my clients. And I understand and I talk quite a lot with them about how they want it to be shaped and how they want it to evolve. Um, so. One of my really big things that I teach couples is massage. I'm really, really, really massively keen on um, tantric stroke, erotic massage. I'm, I'm really, it's such an amazing way to give pleasure and learn about each other. And very often that involves me being hands-on. Because if I want to, sh for example, show a woman how to stroke him. Yes. Mm. I'm not sure what kind of words I'm allowed to use. Can I, so if I Say want it. to show a certain stroke... Go on by. his penis? Yeah. Do you, I say that? You, you, you mean okay. to, do you mean toss him off? <laughs> no! No, oh, okay, I've gone too far. Right, what I mean... I love no, the fact I'm shocking off. Camilla. What I'm... No, no, what I'm doing is I'm trying to train people away from that. Right. Because the toss him off is just a kind of... It's just the same action, and it's really... It's disconnected. No. It's not thoughtful. He's been doing the same action for years <laughs> and never felt anything different. She's kind of watched it and thought, I, that hurts my wrist and I don't want to be... No, no, okay. no, it's Don't tossing off. It's, it's an extended, lengthened, really beautiful erotic massage where you use loads of different strokes and different oh. techniques to take him on a pleasure journey oh. in his energy, which is just kind I of mind-blowing. I and love this. through that, she really learns about him. And that's really difficult to teach yeah. without demonstrating. Yeah. So I will do that. And then equally, I'll show him how to pleasure her. And I'll say, this is the way to stroke her labia. Not with, with, um, with your fingers, but with your she palm. And I'll demonstrate it. And, I'll, and because when I do it, because I know how to do it and I do it really well, she'll quiver with delight. And I'll go, oh, my God, you can do that. You can make this <laughs> do that. Well, do that. Now do it. So I, I do get really hands-on because it's so, much, it's so much quicker. And it's really, it's just so quick and profound and transformational and why wouldn't I because that's what I can offer I wish I'd had a conversation with someone like you uh, in uh, in my 20s or even my 30s. Honestly, I've wasted so much time looking for uh, love and sex in all the wrong places and going about it completely the wrong way. And I've had decades, Camilla, of embarrassment uh, oh. and in shame in the bedroom. And there's, there, I think there is there is an epidemic of that. And I think people like you um, are, 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 are doing, you know, are, are, you're, 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 I get so annoyed. You probably saw these stories about the schools in Birmingham where, where people were protesting outside mm. because of the they were mm. having gay lessons you know mm. and it's in and, and, and just it's, acknowledging that it's, people it's are just gay saying, sometimes you know, this, such and such and such might have two dads and such and such has got two mm. moms that's all it is and, mm. and people seem so afraid and, and i think as a nation we're screwed up when it comes to sex and i think people like you camilla are doing great work oh, and that we need you. to be more open about sex and more and yeah you know what it's kind of fun to snigger about it and be a bit carry on but actually there is a lot more behind it as well, and we should just be a little bit bolder, oh, perhaps. So, you know, what? when when you allow yourself to enjoy it, it is just the most beautiful, pleasurable, amazing thing, and it costs nothing. <laughs> this is the thing, it's like, we spend a fortune 
um, on meals, on booze, on drugs, on whatever. We spend a fortune trying to, to create actually what we can get for free in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. This is a thing that is just mind-blowing. It's like orgasmic sex is way better than any drugs. And it's really good for you. As, as a... As a uh, you, I, we should hang out. As a recovering drug addict, I can totally agree. I can oh, to my God. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, I talk about everything on it, Camilla. Don't you worry about that. Um, yeah. Hey, listen, it's so nice to talk to you. Seriously, if you're ever near London Bridge one night, you're very, very welcome <laughs> to come in. If you, you ever want to come on and plug stuff, just uh, stuff, just drop um, Kathleen. Okay. Where I'm is? Gonna definitely bear that in mind. Please do. You're very welcome. Where is the best place if people want to find out more about you? My website. Um, www.camillaconstance.com camillaconstance.com uh, Camilla, and, and uh, Kath will send you the link for the yeah. John Ronson podcast because I think you'll really enjoy yeah, it actually. I, I, I would appreciate that, thank you, thank you very much. Thanks so much for your time Camilla, take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, bye Camilla. She was brilliant. I love her, she's so good. She's great and it's, uh, we have a little snigger about sex and that's okay but actually if we could just be a little bit more, she was shocked by how much I was giving her man. In terms of <laughs> revelation, sorry, in terms of revelation! I loved her cheer at the well, start. Well, she, her work is in unlocking people. Yeah. So for you to be able to get to that place, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm sure she would appreciate how long it's taken yeah. for you to be able to say half of that she stuff. She was good. I enjoyed that. Uh, phone lines, uh, yes, I know, but erectile dysfunction is a big problem. There's an oxymoron some of you are picking up on. Uh, phone lines are open, dear listener. You can call in about what we've just chatted about with Camilla, or you can call in about absolutely anything you want. You know how it goes. 03444991000 is the uh, telephone number if you want to give us a call. This is The Late Night Alternative with Kath and Ian on Talk Radio. We are Talk Radio. Talk Radio. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk.